Hey folks, I'm going to share my thoughts on the Gigaparts Explorer backpack. This is a new product for me. I purchased it back in March, but just recently had an opportunity to get it out in the field. Now this is not a new bag. There are other reviews of this bag out there, but I'm going to be looking at this from a different angle, a value angle. I'm going to be comparing this with my Eberly stock switchblade. Now, those of you that are familiar with Eberly stock may be thinking, hey, this isn't a fair fight. And in many regards, you would be right. The Switchblade is a $230 bag, where the Explorer is a $60 bag. So why compare them? You know, not everyone is willing to spend $230 on a backpack. I believe many folks would like to know how a cheaper bag compares to a more expensive bag especially one with an established reputation for high quality. We all love a good deal, and we're all looking for value in the money that we spend. So let's see how a $60 backpack compares to a $230 backpack. Here we see the Explorer is made of polyester, where the switchblade is Cordura nylon. Cordura is a premium fabric that is lighter, stronger, and more abrasion resistant than polyester. The heavier weight Explorer fabric makes it roughly equivalent to the 500 denier Cordura nylon in terms of abrasion resistance. The Explorer is actually lighter due to the shoulder harness implementation, which we will look at more closely later. Let's dig into some details on these bags. All right, so we're going to take a look at the features and construction of each of these bags uh, and, and kind of compare areas where I think there is a material difference. So first of all, in storage on the front of the bag, the Explorer has this rip open pouch. It's about an inch deep. It's got uh, some decent zippers on it. They don't appear to be a name brand zipper, but they're a decent zipper. Uh, fairly heavy duty. Uh, they appear to be standard. I don't see really any um, any improvement from a rain perspective or, or from a water ingress perspective. This is just going to be a standard performance zipper. You've got um, a little bit of elastic in here to help keep things organized. Besides the zippers, you've got some uh, Velcro to keep things uh, tight and tidy, so uh, pretty good. Uh, also on the bag, we've got these really large uh, side pouches, and, and these are quite nice. This is a heavy, uh, heavy type material here. It's not going to rip easily. Uh, this is probably one of the nicest features on the bag, in my opinion. Uh, you've also got some molly here for some additional attachments. And of course, you've got that on both sides. Here you can see I've taken one of the included uh, Velcro strips, jammed it uh, between uh, some of those uh, Molly attachment points. And I use this for uh, just keeping longer items uh, better controlled when I've got, uh, got the backpack on. This could be a mast, this could be a tripod or a monopod, something like that. But yeah, I quite like these very large pouches. And this is a nice material here. Uh, let's see what else we've got. Um, we've also got some padding here to uh, make things a little more comfortable from a carry perspective. Um, and we're going to see that in both bags. So let's swap over real quick. And uh, we'll try to go in, the, in roughly the same order here. So here, in terms of outside uh, compartments, You've got a zippered pouch that's about the width of uh, the bag eh, for more flat type items. I actually keep a Frog Togs uh, rain jacket in that compartment. It's big enough to do that. Here you can see the zippers are installed backwards, so to speak. So you get a little bit better uh, moisture or rain performance when they're installed this way. So that's a nice little detail. You've got some uh, some Molly type 
uh, attachment points there. You've got some extra attachment points here. If we look on the side, again, you've got, uh, you've got pouches here for water bottles. Uh, but they're not nearly as uh, not nearly as big. I can get my fist in there, but certainly uh, the Explorer pouches are much larger. Got a little bit of Molly here as well. Uh, you also have a couple um, a couple of compartments that are kind of the depth of the bag on either side. You see, we got those on either side. Okay. Quite nice. These uh, zipper pulls are pretty nice. Uh, the other thing too, oh, I'll point out is you've got a port here to uh, to allow uh, for a tube from a water bladder. And if we look at the back uh, here again, you've got some uh, some padding here to make things a little more comfortable. I'd say this is maybe a little uh, a little more. Uh, effective or dense the the channeling here but it's nice that you've got these on both bags going back to the Explorer uh, let's take a look at some of the attachment points so in my experience places where bags fail are usually in the strap area so here you see we've got kind of uh, some standard stitching, but there is some reinforced stitching. I'll try to make sure you guys can see that. There is some reinforced stitching on the uh, on the edges or the boundaries of the strap, right? And the idea is to not allow a rip to start because once a rip starts uh, in either this polyester or the Cordura, uh, it's pretty much game over. It's it's tough to save it unless you stitch something. Uh, un unless you stitch it closed. Um, here for this attachment point, this or this handle, uh, one of two handles just appears to be standard type stitching uh, that is on the inside. If I take a look at uh, this handle, also uh, kind of standard stitching. It's difficult to see anything special on the interior of the bag, but uh, you know, in my experience, these are failure points, and this is just kind of average uh, in what I see in various types of backpacks and other bags. It's nice that they've got some reinforcement here, but this could certainly be better. Uh, in contrast, if I look at the uh, at the switchblade, first of all, you've got a whole different system in terms of. Uh, the the backpack straps they're in an adjustable harness here this opens up you can move this up or down depending on your preference so you don't have the same type of um, the, the kind of failure points this is this is kind of a unique uh, uh, implementation or a, a unique approach I guess you could look at the failure of where this is stitched, um, but this is double stitched, and it's also quite stiff and, and stout. So I think that is definitely an improvement over standard stitching. If I take a look at the handle here, and it's hard to see, but if I get down in here, hopefully this will show up. There's box stitching on that handle, and that box stitching certainly helps in terms of um, uh, securing the handle and, and stopping a potential rip. So, you know, those are some of the details that I think you get uh, with a little bit better or more expensive bag. Let's see. Um, oh, here's another point where they use some box stitching. So down here where the um, shoulder straps uh, attached to the bottom of the bag. Let's see how we do that on the Explorer. Similar, so that's great. Good to see some uh, some box type stitching there. That's gonna certainly hold, um, but honestly, in my experience, this isn't where I have a problem. This is where I have a problem. All right, uh, let's take a look inside the bag. Well, before we go inside, let's take a look at the top pouch. So here there is a pouch. Uh, it's a deep pouch. You can 
toss a lot of stuff in here. There is a little bit of elastic here, which is nice, but that is it in terms of organization. You can see it's a, it's a fairly good sized pouch though. So you could put your own, um, your own bags or pouches in there for our organization. Contrast again with the switchblade here. Let me get this one open. So this one has a similar type pouch, nice deep pouch. Uh, but here you can see there's certainly a lot more organization. So there's a little panel in here. Uh, you've got some pockets. You've got some retaining straps. So you've got uh, you know, maybe a four inch wide pocket, some pencil style pockets here. Okay, and then also behind, behind that, you've got some bigger pockets, right? So you've got a little more organization and you've got those on both sides. And then of course you got even uh, one more pocket here as well. So certainly a lot more organization in the switchblade. All right, back to the Explorer. Let's get this guy opened up. Again, this is nice. You can just, uh, for the most part, except when the zipper catches just a little bit, this will rip right open. Okay, and again, this, these zippers are, are decent zippers. They're not the best, um, but, they're, but they're not bad either. You've got a couple mesh pockets here. These are nice, decent pockets. You can put a decent amount of gear here. A little piece of Velcro patch there. We get into the main compartment, wide open, right? You can splay this wide open. So you've got a nice field of uh, hook and loop here. So you can add your own organization. There is no other organization, all right? There is no other option, so you have to add your own. You've got a couple screen pockets here, and then a couple uh, sets of loops here, which is great also for masts, uh, antenna parts and pieces, anything that's kind of vertically oriented. Uh, the uh, POTA 20 mast does fit in this side, so that's a, that's a nice bonus. All right, let me set this guy aside. And if we take a look at the Explorer, it is similarly configured where you can splay it open. Now it's got a little bit more of a structure to it. Here we've got a field of hook and loop, right? So you can put your Velcro related items here. You've got a some organization here, or some Molly item or Molly pieces to, to add some stuff there. And then this is where you, things really look a lot different. You've got a little bit more uh, options from an organization standpoint here. You've got a long pouch here, the depth of the bag. You've got a laptop sleeve and you've got a second sleeve that could be for a hydration bladder. And again, you've got the little uh, port spot there. Um, as you can see, you've got some Molly here that's also Velcro, so you can do different things with that. The whole backside of this panel is uh, also hook and loop. Uh, you can see I've added some patches here. And then you've got some other neat little things if you wanna hang your keys and have quick access to them, something like that. So much more organization um, built into this bag, which, uh, you know, I like. Um, still open enough that you can do your own thing to a certain extent, but um, that's one of the big differences, I think, in the bags. All right, let me see if there's anything extra I wanna call out. Uh, you've got, uh, you know, some attachment points here. You know, I don't think anything material uh, in the difference here. If we take a look at the Explorer, we've got some uh, attachment points as well, um, both vertical and horizontal. So there you have it. Those are the aspects of the bags that I think uh, are the biggest differences and um, you know, likely why one bag is 
$60 and another is over $200. Now, for $60, this is a heck of a lot of bag. I mean, it's, uh, yes, it's, it's polyester, it's not nylon. Nylon is gonna be more water resistant, but this is a little bit heavier. Um, so it's not gonna be that much of a difference. Um, yes, the zippers are not quite as nice. Yes, they are kind of a standard install. You're gonna get kind of standard um, uh, water capabilities out of those zippers, but they're not bad. They're heavy duty at least, right? They're good sized zippers. And you've got the flexibility to do whatever you wanna do with this bag. All right, so what all do I have in this thing? So you can see I've got my coax here. I've got uh, some, some stakes, some little guy wire, and some roller cams. And then let me open this baby up. Get it started here. One of the nice things about this bag is it flops way open. All right. So here's what I've got in here. I've got some ground wires for my Wolf River coil 10 meter vertical. Nothing in that panel. Just got some odds and ends in this little explorer bag. This is a bag that I keep some end-fed half waves in. I've got a little um, I've got a little uh, pouch here that's designed for the 818, but my matte tuner fits in here. So I've got that in here. I've got my 891 here. I'll go ahead and pull that sucker out. And I've got a laptop sleeve here with my little Linux, uh, my Linux ThinkPad. Let's see, I've got my new Explorer mast in there and I've got my 10 meter Wolf River coil vertical antenna. So yeah, everything fits, looks good. All right, gang, there you have it. Look, I'm not gonna tell you how to spend your money. I'm just trying to show you the difference between what you get when you spend 60 bucks versus what you get when you spend more. Look, I have both of these bags. Is the Explorer going to replace my switchblade that I use at every ham fest that I travel with, that I use very regularly? Not a chance. However, I am going to keep it loaded with my 891 and the rest of my POTA gear so that when I'm ready to head out to do a POTA, I've got everything in one place and I'm ready to roll. This thing is more than capable to get me from the truck to the picnic table and back again. And I'm sure it's going to do that for me for many years. All right, folks, that's all I got for you this time. Hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you in the comments. Let me know what you think about the Explorer $60 backpack. And if you've got the Switchblade, let me know what you think about that. If you've got another POTA backpack that you want everyone to know about, leave that in the comments as well. All right, we'll see you next time, 7-3.